Thank you for visiting Utique Bridal. This is part one of how I created the flower girl dress for my daughter. Today I'm going to show you how I created the sewing pattern using a dress that my daughter already had and share with you the fabrics I've purchased for this project. So let's get started on creating the pattern. Her aunt from Canada gave her a dress that fit her perfectly and I really like the silhouette of it. So I'll start by folding the dress in half and laying it completely flat on the table. Using organza fabric that I had, I'm just going to lay it on top of the dress and line up the edge of the organza with the center fold of the dress. And now I'm going to place pins along the bodice of the dress. Now simply using a pencil, I'm going to trace the seam lines of the bodice. To make it more visible for you, I'm going to trace it here with a marker. I almost forgot, but I had to mark where the sleeves meet the bodice, as well as when the ruffles started. Repeat for the other side, and now you have the pattern for the bodice. For the sleeve pattern, I'm going to take the organza and fold it in half. Line up the fold of the organza with the fold of the sleeve. Now place some pins to hold it in place. Now making note of when the ruffles start on the sleeve, Using a fabric pen, start marking along the seam line. Here I'm using a marker to make it more visible for you. Now I'm going to take the tape measure and measure the height of the sleeve. Here I got 3 and 5 eighths of an inch. Now measuring from the bottom of the organza up, I'm going to measure up 3 and 5 eighths and then mark the top of the organza. Then just connect the curve of the sleeve. Transfer the lines to the other side, mark the center of the sleeves, as well as label the front and the back of the sleeve. You can trim the fabric down and you are complete with the sleeve pattern. For the skirt pattern, I'm going to lay the organza fabric over the center fold of the skirt and pin. Next, trace along the seam line, and if you need, you can always use a ruler to straighten out the line. I'm also going to draw in the center mark for the fold of the skirt. Now to prevent the organza fabric from shifting, and because I'd like to use this pattern again for another dress project, I'm going to take it to the machine and thread trace the pattern. Once I'm done with thread tracing all the pieces, then I am complete with the sewing pattern. Now for the fabrics, I knew I wanted to use lace inspired by the bride's wedding gown, and I wanted to have some light reflecting quality to it. So I narrowed down my option to the silver foiled lace, and this gold embroidered fabric. So of course I asked my friends and family on Facebook and Instagram to vote and the gold embroidery was favored. During the process another adorable flower girl was added to the bridal party and when I went back to purchase the fabric there was not enough gold embroidery fabric for two dresses so I had to make the quick decision and purchase the silver foiled lace. So even though we didn't end up with the gold embroidery fabric, I do appreciate everyone's input. So thank you everyone. So here I am at the downtown fabric shop purchasing the rest of the fabrics. So I ended up purchasing the silk organza for the interfacing. The lace and the satin are the main fabrics of the dress. And then this silk is going to be used for the lining and then I purchased a lot of tulle. So that concludes part one of the flower girl dress. Thank you for visiting and I hope you have an extraordinary day. If you would like to view part two of the flower girl dress, or if you would like to learn how to create the flower girl sash, please click on one of the images.